no longer me. For my Redeemer, my Lord, set me free. He rescued me. And I will praise you. setting me free for loving me. I was so lost and your sin so far, but redeeming blood washed me to right where you are. Now I am your child and you are my your redeeming love just leaves me standing in awe for love you are. And I will praise you for all that you have done for me. setting me free for the you are and I will praise you for all that you have done for me I will praise you for redeeming setting me free for redeeming and setting me Savior on that cursed tree, his body bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone. Oh, pray. We will. 
will sing your praise, O Lord, O Lord our God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing. Precious cornerstone, sure foundation, you are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe you're all to us. Let the glory of of the church let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives we believe you're all to us Holy Son of God sent from heaven Hope and mercy at the cross. You are everything. You're the promise. Jesus, you are all to us. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe you're all to us. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe you're all to us. You're all to us. You're
church, let us be you on this earth. Let us be you when a wounded soul cries out for hope. Let us be you when the lonely need to know they're not alone. Just as your stars pierce through the night, let us forever shine your light. Let us be you, let us be you on this earth. Reach with our hands, touch this city. Lord, let our mouths speak your truth. Use our blessings to bring justice. Let us be you, revive your church. Let us be you on this earth. Let us be you when a wounded soul cries out for hope. Let us be you when the lonely need to know they're not alone. Just as your stars pierce through the night, let us forever shine your light. Let us be you, let us be you on this earth. Let us be you on this earth. Your light broke through my night, restored exceeding joy. Your grace fell like the rain and made this desert live. You have turned my morning into dancing. You have turned my sorrow into joy. You have turned my morning into dancing. You have turned my sorrow into joy. Your hand lifted me up. I stand on higher ground. Your praise rose in my heart and made this valley sing. You have turned my morning into dancing. You have turned my sorrow into joy. You have turned my morning into dancing. You have turned my sorrow into joy. This is how we overcome. 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 You have turned my morning into dancing. You have turned my sorrow into joy. You have turned my morning into dancing. You have turned. My sorrow into this is how we overcome. This is how we overcome. 
This Wednesday, June 8th, come join me and my team at Caldwell Elementary for their end of the year carnival. There'll be food, games, lots of fun. It's a great way to kick off our summer serving our community. We hope to see you there. Aww. Howdy. I want to welcome everyone here and online. Um, thank you for joining us. I hope you get to uh, praise God in the way that you can. And uh, so we're, we're so thankful for you being here with us this morning. If you need anything, please reach out to us if you're a guest. You're definitely an honored guest, and thank you for coming and being a part of us. I wanted, we have one announcement. Um, last week, Jake Ramirez was baptized. So when you see him, <laughs> hug him and uh, encourage him as he, he begins his walk in, in the Lord. As we begin today, as, as Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. This is the time of rejoicing regardless of your circumstances because we are children of God. So. Let's, let's have a great day of worship. Thank you. Good morning, church. Okay, so let's everybody stand up first of all. All right, we're going to have a moment. We're going to go around. We're going to find somebody we haven't talked to, and I want you to talk to them about a quality of God that you saw this past week. Say good morning to somebody. songs that we're singing, they're describing God straight to God. They're giving praise straight to Him. It's like you're singing directly to Him. And so when we read Scripture this morning, I want you to really own in on the words in these Scriptures that describe God and how He never leaves us. So listen to the reading of God's Word this morning. This is from Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for allowing us this opportunity to worship you this morning. 
Father, you are always there for us. You never leave or forsake us. Father, we love you. And this morning, we praise you uh, with our mouths. We also praise you with our hearts and our souls and our mind and our strength. And through your son's precious name, amen. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oceans 
like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance. You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds, and nothing I desire compares with you. Lord, you more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than
Listen to these words from 2 Samuel 22. To the pure, you show yourself pure, but to the devious, you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but your eyes are on the haughty to bring them low. You, Lord, are my lamp. The Lord turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps me my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. Please be seated. My only hope is you, Jesus. My only hope is you. From early in the morning till late at night, my only hope is you. morning church you are such a blessing thank you for being here this morning um, it's just good to be in this family if you haven't experienced that I invite you to stay and stick around um, this morning I was walking from my car there are two gentlemen cutting through our parking lot and the spirit of the living God said mark you got to say something and I said, you know what, I'm going in here to praise God, do you wanna join me? And the answer was no, we're going across the street to get a couple of smokes. But, but it's good, it is good to be here. Um, I've got too much to say and I'm gonna be loquacious as my father-in-law was. First Corinthians 11, for I received, this is Apostle Paul, I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he broke it, he gave thanks and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup, a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. How do we remember? How are we gonna remember this morning the new covenant? How are you? It's, it's individual and it's collective, but it's individual to you as to how you remember, how you see yourself in the, in, in the view of the cross, in view of a savior that has saved you. It changes it almost every morning I come to church. It's different every morning. Um, perhaps you are blessed to have a Barnabas who texts you on a Sunday morning at 6.55 a.m. Thankfully, you're already up and your beep, beep, beep's not waking up your wife. And he texts you Psalms 123, which starts, I lift my eyes to you, for you are enthroned on heaven, in heaven. That's not what he texts. Let's go to the text. Psalms 121, excuse me. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. That's a good way to remember. Proverbs 
Perhaps you remember um, and you carry with you Psalms 51 from David. Maybe you remember through, for I know my transgressions and my sins are always before me. Or perhaps you're down the chapter a few verses and you're saying, create in me a pure card, O oh God. Renew it to the fast spirit within me. How do you see yourself? Maybe you see yourself as a fallen human being in a fallen world with more problems than we can number. And you, you always are struggling to try to put it together and Sunday is when God puts it all back together. Perhaps you're over here. Perhaps you're over here. Can you hear me? Still, am I loud enough? All right. Perhaps you're over here. Okay. Perhaps you're over here. And you've been here. Okay. Jake, you've been here in the waters of baptism. Salvation belongs to your God. And he's given you all this. But for some reason, this stone... Is blocking your view. You, you're struggling. You're all, you're all over the place, but this stone is blocking your view. Death is gone. Death is conquered. Maybe there's a bunch of stones. Maybe you came into church with a pile of 20 or 30 of these things on your back. Maybe it's your sin. Maybe it's your worry. Whatever it is, you brought these with you this morning, and you're going to remember through those stones. Maybe you managed to get it down to... I got a bunch of keys in my pocket, but just a few rocks, maybe through the power of God working in your life, you're just managing a couple of stones in your pocket of sin, of, of worry. How are you going to remember this morning? However you remember this morning, Christ is not on the cross. He's at the right hand of God. Um, I, don't, I don't know if our architect did this, but to me... This thing right here pointing up in a big arrow reminds me of the breastplate with all the gems on it of the high priest. And the high priest goes into the holy holies and sanctifies the Jewish people. Our high priest is always there. He's, he's waiting to speak your name to God. He's waiting for you to cry out. And, and he promises his spirit will come to your spirit and testify, you don't need to worry about boulders or rocks. That's not your job anymore. You're fired from that job. You're, you, got your, you got your pink slip. You're done. Every Sunday morning, you're going to get fired. And we're going to do that now by going to the, to, the, to the Savior that's at the right hand of God. Let him testify to you and, and let you remember where you are and who you are. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we remember because you asked us to. You asked us to come together and be family and praise you and worship you and remember we are not our own. Salvation is not ours. It's yours. You've done it all. All we have to do is is confess in faith and, and be yours. God, help us to do that today, this morning. Help us to struggle with how great you are. Help us to submit to your authority and your power. And God, help us to go out with that power. Forgive us for fearing anything but you. Let us speak your name so that that will be firstborn among many believers, that those who innerly ache and cry out for you can know that you're standing at God's right hand speaking their name, blessing their name. Your spirit can testify to their spirit. It's through your son that we pray, and we thank you for the sacrifice of his body on the cross. Amen.
My only peace is you, Jesus. My only peace is you. From early in the morning till late at night, my only peace is Let's pray. Oh, holy God, thank you for your son. Thank you for the blood that was shed for us once for all that all of us could live. God, help us to be your people. Help us to beat back our flesh. Help us to buffet our body like the Apostle Paul and live in the spirit. God, you are spirit. And you have promised that when we contemplate your glory, you, you bless us with more and more spiritual life, more and more made like your son. We're so thankful. We're so thankful that you've given us new names and you've given us salvation that belongs to you. And God, help us to live in faith. It's through your son we pray. Amen. My only joy is you, Jesus. My only joy is you. From early in the morning till late at night, my only joy is you. All that I need is you, Jesus. All that I Kids that are third or three years old through kindergarten, you can head out during this song for Children's Church. Everybody else, we're going to stay in here, and we're going to stand up. We're going to sing this next song before Robbie comes and brings us the word. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow. up on wings like eagles. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. 
Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, Shadow Road family. I am Sasha Terry. I'm Elisa Terry. And starting this Sunday, Robbie is going to begin a new summer series called Everyday Jesus. And Elisa is going to help you experience this sermon through art. Every Sunday between worship and class, I will have three canvases set up in the, um, in the family center. And I'm going to have paints out and I'll help you put your fingerprint on the canvas and in the end it's going to be like all of the fingerprints combined is going to be a painting that will represent the uh, everyday Jesus. You want to grab the canvas? So when you come into the family center, Elisa will be set up and you'll come to her if you want to participate and she will Get your thumb, she'll dip it in paint, and then she'll press it on the canvas where she wants it so that we can create an artwork representing everyday Jesus as an entire congregation. Yes, sir. Good morning. Welcome to those online and also those in our auditorium. Thanks, Ty, for those centering songs. We can't use him. We can't use his message. He is hes not involved with what I struggle with. These are some of the statements that people make concerning Jesus and gospel and Christianity in general. Sometimes we feel like when we come into the physical church walls, that's the only place where he makes sense, where he's praised, where he's adored. And once you leave those doors, it's like you are on your own to fend for yourself. He's not relatable. He doesn't get me. He doesn't understand my day to day. In this series, we want to make a statement that the Bible makes. We want to go countercultural. Not just in terms of society, but in terms of vain and programmed religion. To bring the presence of a living Jesus who gets you every day, even in your mundane. And so, yes, a couple of days ago I heard that there was another shooting in Oklahoma. And I urge you to pray specifically as we started off last week. Pray for lawmakers and pray for policies. As I was walking in here, I saw there was a setup for a wedding. And there's going to be vows exchanged. In a little while, two lives will become one. And as I looked at the video of Sasha and his daughter, I remember that the matriarch, his mom, has gone from this natural world to the supernatural where her eyes have beheld the Savior. This happens every day. Tra tragedies, marriages, births and deaths, struggles every single day. And so I want us to understand that Jesus is not just chained to a pulpit or a church house. He's with you even before you get here. Every day, Jesus for recovering addicts. Ephesians 5, verse 18 to verse 20. I am a recovering addict. Are you an addict? Oh, no, 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 no. I keep a steady job. I have friends and a social life. I don't stay strung out for days, nor do I miss meetings and appointments. 
I drive well and I dress well, I speak well, I attend church, I am super involved. No, I'm not an addict. Therefore, don't be foolish, Paul says from verse 17, but understand what the Lord's will is. Now, as we pick up in verse 18, we read, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, basically unrestrained living. If it feels good, do it. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from. Just do not forget that word as we go into this text. Psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not Kansas anymore. It is Ephesus and Dionysus, also known later to the Romans as Bacchus is the god of wine and pleasure, and he is of a dual nature, giving divine ecstasy as the mellow mood wine puts you in, but also anger and blinding rage as wine does if you are under its influence. Dionysus, also known as Bacchus, from which we get the term bacchanal. I don't know if you've ever heard of that term bacchanal, but that's where it comes from. And before I was introduced to Greek mythology, I grew up on an island where we went to carnival, also synonymously called bacchanal. And for good reason. It is not the carnival that you go to with Ferris wheels and cotton candy. A closer approximation might be Mardi Gras. And so in the streets, you have trucks. In the streets, you have music. In the streets, you have people scantily clad, leaving nothing for the imagination. In the streets, you have gyrating. In the streets, you have alcohol being thrown. In the streets, you have people dancing in close approximation, in close proximity. And I do mean close proximity. And then I began to understand what was happening in Ephesus. This unrestrained activity, this culture that gave them a way to numb the senses but to reach the stage of ecstasy. And Paul writes to this church, he writes to an addicted church. They are coming out of the world with their addictions and baggage in tow. Yet Paul addresses them in the prologue. Are you ready for this? As God's holy people. You have the pursuit of satisfaction which is fulfilled. Satisfying the want for ecstasy or satiating the numbing of pain. Paul says, you live in a society that has given you the opportunity to be satisfied. But the problem with this satisfaction is that it does not last. So as soon as you go high, you go low, and you want to get back to that high. Paul says there is a difference between satisfaction and fulfillment. And so Jesus says it's like this. You want water. This lady is coming to the well to draw water. You want water, but you will be back at a later date because water does not satisfy. It quenches. And then the first comes again. He says, I tell you what. 
I will give you a well springing up in you so that you won't need to be coming back over and over and over again. You will be filled. Paul says, don't be ruled by drunkenness. It is one manifestation evident in a satisfaction seeker. A poor choice in the pursuit of fulfillment. Satiated, kept at bay, is the pain and worry and trouble and conflict when it is drowned with liquor. But it always resurfaces because addiction to wine leads to debauchery, unrestrained living. So the proverb writer says, wine is a marker. But strong drink is raging. You have the duality of what it gives. They seek exhilaration in Ephesus. They seek a rush in Ephesus. They seek to be pacified, forgetting troubles or coping with present distresses. Do not be foolish, he says. Be reflective. Understand where you live, the dangers and the things that confuse your good senses. Cravings not solely because of biology or socialization, but because of our fallen nature, we fight every day to not lose our good sense. Paul says, don't use wine to attain your excitement and your exhilaration. Don't use wine to numb your worries and problems. Exhilaration from abuse of anything is the devil's way of luring us into habits that will leave us lower after each high. The loss of self-control is not just living under a bridge or pawning your mom's furniture to buy drugs. Losing self-control could also mean losing the ability you have to leave that thing that you accommodate. You might be a functioning addict this morning able to stop using or doing or dabbling for a week or a day, but you always keep it near. You have no desire to stop. A short pause is not recovery. But as we look at this text, I want to invite you to take out wine, which is the thing that the Ephesians wrestled with. Take out the wine and replace it with whatever your addictive calling is. The things that force us to hide, to feed the habit, to not confess or expose them. I am a recovering addict. Are you an addict? Uh, no, I keep a steady job. I have friends and a social life. I I don't stay strung out for days, nor do I miss meetings and appointments. I drive well, I dress well, I speak well. I attend church and I'm not, I'm very super involved. No, I am not an addict. Paul says, don't be drunk. Don't be under the influence. Don't seek ecstasy from wine, but be filled with the spirit. An overdose of wine or substance by the ancients was often used to communicate to the gods or receive special knowledge, not otherwise obtainable, separate from that commune. As some still use substances today to go in a trance, to communicate with the so-called divine. Paul says, look around you, Ephesians. It is still going on. The high priests of the false gods use these things. But Paul contrasts the ecstasy induced by these practices, often found in Dionysian orgies, with the ecstasy and fulfillment to be found in Christ. They follow these practices to gain pleasure to gain knowledge, 
to gain satisfaction. Yet it only hurt them in the end over and over again. So here's it in plain layman's language. If you want a lasting, healthy high, seek Christ. If you want a lasting, healthy high, Instead of being filled with wine, be filled with the Spirit, which brings you inner peace, real fulfillment, deep insight, lasting joy, and true satisfaction, untied to a substance, but tied to the presence of Him who sharpens your faculties, who makes you aware of the sleight of hand of the devil. Calling good things bad and bad things good through your heroes, your social groups, and your leaders who normalize addictions and brokenness. So being filled and satisfied by God will manifest among you. Look at your text. Being filled and satisfied by God will manifest among you. Your newfound knowledge of how God works sets free the person, the mind, the body, and soul. He reveals it to you. So your text says, do not be drunk on wine. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from. It's a gift that He gives you. You do not write those songs. You have no ability, you have no experience, you have no power to write these songs. These songs is a regalo, it's a gift. But you can only get that gift when he's actively feeling you. And so the healing is from God. The songs from the Spirit in testimony. We don't often use that word in our fellowship. But that's what he's talking about here. Testimony. And common worship. Not a scheduled service. See the knowledge and joys associated with your victory. And holy ecstasy will provide for the content of your testimony to one another. So he says, Psalms, the Psalter, the 150 or so etched in the Old Testament. Those songs, those Christian hymns, sacred lyrics, spirit addicted people speak to one another just like the junkies exhibit the outward signs of inward turmoil. Like the person high on alcohol brings destruction in their stupor. Like the son of a parent trying to sell his mama's couch because he wants a high. Spirit addicted people have outward signs as well. Songs, shouts of joy, lines of testimony, encouraging one another that God did it. They're not just reciting scripture, committed to memory. They are telling what God did and confirming the activity of the Holy Spirit. Oh, the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of God and I can't sing it properly I'm off key I know but oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 and I didn't deserve it and I couldn't earn it but you gave yourself away you gave me a song and it is not about the lost coin, the lost sheep, or the lost son. It's about me who was lost, who had an encounter with God, and he gave me a song. And he said, you turn to your neighbor, turn to one another, and sing that song. Testify, give testimony about the goodness of God. Some of us don't have a song, I can tell. Because you look down on the addicted, 
You look down on the strain and the brand of their addiction, not realizing that you are addicted as well. If you haven't realized it yet, this is not a sermon against wine. It is a sermon against addiction. And that, come in many, that comes in many shapes and sizes. So Paul says believers come together not for wild parties as contrasted with this Dionysian cult. Not for wild parties or to sing the world songs. They come together to edify, speaking songs from the inner man, the heart, to the edification of one another and to the praise of God the Father because of the work that Christ has done in giving, in buying, purchasing, saving grace. Give thanks, he says. Thanksgiving is the grateful acknowledgement of benefits received because the songs we have is from, given from God. Like the lady who has battle cancer and she goes to ring the bell to underscore the last treatment is finally over and she rings that bell not because she wants to be, you know, in a fanfare. She smiles and she cries. Not because she wants to please somebody or to look a certain way. She does it because of her experience. Her hair has fallen off. And those cancer treatments have been painful. And she remembers the nights on the floor crying. She remembers. She remembers. And when she rings the bell, she's not asking for approval. She's appreciating the medicine. She's appreciating the nurses and the doctors. She's appreciating. She doesn't care how she looks to you or how her hair is not there anymore. She is happy. She has a testimony. So when you sing your song, you don't sing your song for people. You know where you've been. You know what you have seen. You know what you have felt. And you sing underscoring that God lives and he saved me he gave me a song to sing about he lifted me from sin and doubt give thanks thanksgiving is the grateful acknowledgement that you've received benefits Paul says three things to battle addiction we're going to get to and in this little text uh, three verses, 18, 19, and 20. It is not a text to win an argument over the music in church or the type of music we need, we need to have in our modern church. It is an ancient basket of being. It is a blistering treatise on how to battle addiction and replace cravings. Even those addictions and cravings that seem socially accepted, invited by family and friends, and modeled by intellectual others. I had a gun on my head, and they told me if you say anything, you're, you're gonna be dead. It's not fun going to sleep at night, not knowing if somebody's gonna do a drop by and you're gonna be dead. So Renee, thank you for coming here to Saturn Road so you could share your testimony, uh, your recovery story. Um, but before we get started with your story, um, I want to talk about this word recovery because maybe when we were growing up, um, it used to have a lot of negative connotations to it, right? Just the word recovery made a lot of people nervous. Mm -hmm. But what, what do you remember uh, as some of the negative things? Uh, you know, growing up when you heard the word recovery? I've, I used to think that only um, through church you were able to do it, but the, I, I guess we didn't have enough knowledge of the disease itself. Mm. You know, for one, I used to think I'm not living under a bridge yet, so I'm not that bad enough yet. And uh, little that I know is that it was the 
the liar, the devil that was putting those words in my head. Yeah. You know. Uh, what would you say uh, was the main cause for you getting uh, into addiction? And you can describe what those addictions were. This one time I, I went to a club for the first time and I was with my sister and her and my brother-in-law were there. I told him, I'm leaving this, this isn't for me. He told me, you need to drink one of these. And I said, I've tried that, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And I started drinking that. And all of a sudden something happened. It just, it just hit. And it's that spiritual experience, everything changed. Mm -hmm. And it's like that feeling that, that I had that Everybody was smiling at me now. That was the start of it because the rest of the rest of that particular part that I was drinking or using, it was trying to find that feeling again. Yeah, yeah. And of course, later on you find out it was all a lie from Satan. I hurt my parents a lot because I had grew up in a church. And it was like I was numb. Like I I just didn't I didn't care. And when I did care I would numb my feelings with alcohol or drugs, so I wouldn't care anymore. And um, it, it was just a, it was a terrible part of my life. Now that I look back, but even at that time, that's why I want to numb it because it wasn't fun, mm -hmm. you know. And, and they glorify that on TV and all that. It's not it's not fun going to sleep at night not knowing if somebody's gonna do a drive by and you're gonna be dead or the police are gonna come in and maybe shoot you because they think that you're doing something or you might move the wrong way because you're asleep. I mean, it might be your fault, you know, and uh, you just don't know when, when, you're gonna, when you're gonna die or you're gonna be in prison. That's what you're looking, that's your future right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, it was a terrible way of, of life uh, that I had chosen. Uh, so, Renee, can you describe a typical day? I know that you, you and you're helping with a lot of folks. So can you just kind of describe a typical day uh, in your life? Um, when I wake up, uh, the first thing uh, that I do is I, I have to, I either, I mean, I have to pray. I have to say, even if it's just the name of Jesus, I have to put him in my mind. Mm -hmm. Because once he's there, I don't have no other bad thought, anything negative coming in there. And, uh, uh, and I usually get ready for work and then on my way from work, I'm, on my way to work, I'm just, uh, sometimes I'll pray the whole time and if it takes me an hour, 20 minutes, I prayed an hour and 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that keeps me focused, you know, throughout the day. and. If I see anything going the wrong way, I'll, I'll go back to the Lord again. Yeah. And that helps me to, to stay focused during the day. I don't want to do my will. I've done my will and he let me through a lot of pain. So yeah. I want to do his will from now on. Yeah. I never went back again. And I've been, I've been clean ever since. Recovering about 17 years. Cover it. Three things in the text. Paul says, you need a higher power. The world says, hey, you know, let's get some new age meditation and, and focus and or, or you know, hire a yogi you know, to, to lead you through these meditative things. Paul says, <laughs> you need a higher power. Because the persons that are meditating and doing those things, they are just you know, focusing on whatever divine that's out there. God revealed that he created the world, so we meditate on God. You need a higher power. Paul also says that you need spiritual discipline. This idea of singing psalms and hymns, the songs that you get from God in your walk with God, Paul says turn around and talk it out with other people. He says, one another. One another. I'm not asking you to come here and divulge all your sins in front of this whole crowd. I'm asking you to find people that will hold you accountable. People that will walk with you. People that won't castigate you for the things that you're addicted to because they are addicted to things as well. We are always in recovery. 
That's the thing we don't get. Well, I've made it. No, you have not. We are always in recovery. Three things. Higher power, spiritual discipline, and community. You need spiritual discipline, a rhythm that helps you focus or to develop a lifestyle of sobriety physically and spiritually. Worship is a spiritual discipline. It focuses, it helps you to dedicate your mind, your memory, your body movement to ponder the divine, the trinity, and their pursuit of us. The rhythm of common worship and testimony is tied to one another, to community. And so the Lenten season that kicks off with Ash Wednesday should begin every morning anew. Sobriety is 24 hours at a time. People speak of being in recovery 18 to 20 years because they take it one step at a time. That's because the temptation is always calling, inviting, inviting you for the treat. But you have to replace it. And God said, I will give you my spirit. But you have to confess and do your part. You have to walk in community. Again, this is not a cattle call to divulge your worst, but an invitation to allow people, trusted people, you can confess to and ask to help you name those sins, expose them to the light and healing of the gospel. So I am a recovering addict. Are you an addict? Oh, no, I'm not an addict. I mean, you know, I keep a steady job. I have friends and a social life. I don't stay strung out for days. Nor do I miss meetings and appointments. I drive well, I dress well, I speak well. I attend church, I'm super involved. No, I am not an addict. We're not talking about alcohol. We're not talking about drugs and, you know, methamphetamines alone. We are talking about everything that you cannot put down. Everything that you cannot live without. Everything that you can kick for a day, a week, even a month, but you eventually go back. I'm looking at a room full of addicts, beginning with myself. I'm a recovering addict. And don't ask me, what am I recovering from? I have people that I walk with that keep me accountable. With every temptation, every law, I'm learning how to fight because I have to fight. Not through my power, but through the Holy Spirit power. I know He is real. I'm not asking you if He's real. I know He is real. He has given me a song. Has He given you a song? Oh, do you get your high? How? Do you get your exhilaration? How do you get your rush? How do you cope with trouble? How do you pacify your guilt and your pain and your shame? How do you shut the mouths of demons, your demons reminding you of where you've been, what you've seen, what you've done? How do you attain the feeling of ecstasy or rightness with God? What are the tools you use? Drugs? Alcohol, social media, yes, I said social media, gossip, judgment, slander, racism, envy, jealousy, anger. What are you addicted to? What are you addicted to? We are not going to play this game of putting addictions in a box and ranking them from top tier to bottom tier. Addictions are addictions and they fall in the same subset. And they lead us to the very same place, away from God. What are you addicted to? What can you not seem to shake? And do you want to be well? <laughs> Some people don't want to be well. And I remember many times, I did not want to be well. I did not. You have to want to be well. Because God is not going to come and work with you against your will. He chases us down. He fights till we are found. But then we have to say, okay, I give in. I give up. Let's work. 
Do you want to be well? Do you want to be sober? It happens one day at a time. I am a recovering addict. And in Ephesians, Paul says, do not be an addict of anything. I'm speaking in context to the Ephesians, so wine is their thing. Because of all these cultish movements, that's what they're coming out of. But they are still God's holy people. Paul says, do not be addicted to anything, but be addicted to God's spirit. Spend time, allow him to reveal himself and receive a new song. Not a broken song, a new song. A song with good stanzas and poignant choruses. Receive and then turn to your neighbor. Turn to one another and confess. Oh, let me tell you, child, I was doing this and that and the other. And he rescued me. Let me tell you how he rescued me. Let me tell you what he did. Really? I am in that predicament myself. Is there hope? Is there grace? Is there a new morning? Yes, child. I am singing my songs to you because I've been with my Lord. It's not a church program. It's not a church program. You can't put ears on for that. If you have not experienced that, you have nothing to say. But I'm looking at a room full of people that has been for some things and I did not been for God. You're not sitting there suited, clothed, down in your right frame of mind. Sing those songs. Paul says you need a higher power. Paul says you need spiritual discipline. Sing those songs. Meditate on them. Let them guide you. Let them direct you. And reverberate those songs in community. That's how you break addiction. That's how the Ephesians coming in with their baggage and their drunkenness in tow, also God's holy people. Your actions don't make you holy. Your perfection don't make you holy. God makes you holy. Hmm. Think on these things. At Southern Road, we have the R3 program. It's a 12-step program run by my man over there, Uni Bueno. Real issues, real forgiveness, real recovery. They meet on Tuesdays, every Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Um, they meet on ground, but also they do Zoom as well. If you want to be a part of that program, or if you know somebody who needs to be in that program, call the office, so let's walk it out with these people or with you. Help is available. And I don't want to get caught up in the idea of monologue. We need to dialogue. We need to speak on those things so that we as a body could heal together and invite people into that healing process. So after this sermon is over, all recovering addicts who are interested, I'm asking you to go to see Sasha, go to see his daughter so that she could take a thumbprint and engage in a dialogue, a dialogue of souls where we create something that says to God, we cry out to you. We recognize you as our power to break the chains of addiction. And we want to give our thumbs, ourselves, our activity in that process of acknowledging and singing one to another and celebrating and creating something that says, it's not us. It's not about us. It's never been about us. We know where our power comes from. We will do it together. We will do it in community. So if you have a thumb, I know some folks don't have thumbs around here. <laughs> oh, you know, different things. But just get into that process. We don't want monologues, we want dialogues. So I'll just stand to your feet and as Ty gets ready to lead us. Here's my final thought for you. Don't bum rush the stage to divulge your deepest, darkest things. 
bum rush each other. Because some people, you can't trust them with your things. They are too immature. They are growing still. Find people that you can trust. Because we are all in the same boat. We are all in the same boat. And if you are judging your addiction based on someone else's addiction, then you have already failed. Bum rush somebody. Confess. Walk. Speak. Sing what God has given you from which you celebrate recovery every single day. When you step out, it is 24 hours every single day, every single hour. That's how you celebrate. Recovering is present continuous. It is not past tense or future oriented. It is present continuous. Think on these things. As all recovering addicts sing to God most high. Jesus, let us come to know you. Let us see you face to face. Touch us, hold us, use us, hold us. Only let us Quick seat. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He answers prayer. Jesus is Lord, my Redeemer, how he loves me, how I love him, he is risen, he is coming, Lord come quickly.
this morning, our, our brother Rick Hunter comes this morning just um, bearing his heart and emptying his soul and uh, talking about the struggles that he has in life. I love what scripture says. It says, remind the people at one time we too were foolish and disobedient and deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. And we lived in malice and envy and we're being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. So that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. And then it says, this is a trustworthy saying. And I want you to stress these things so that those who have been entrusted in God, who have trusted in God, may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. And these things are excellent and profitable for everyone. In this life, we struggle just like Rick. We all have different struggles. But Jesus came and he asked us to follow him. And he knew our weaknesses. And yet it was his loving kindness and his grace that makes us perfect in all circumstances. So this morning, let's, let's pray for one another. And let's pray for Rick. And let's be honest with each other and share with one another, as Robbie's told us, that we might all be encouraged, that we might encourage one another, and that we might be real. Jesus is real. So let's follow him. Let's follow his example. Let's pray. Our most holy God, we give you so much thanks for your love and kindness and grace. And in times when we are overcome with grief, like Rick is this morning, we just pray that each one of us has someone in our life that is close, that we can call and reach out to, and we can be reminded of the fact that we are made perfect because of your loving kindness for us, and not because of what we've done. But Lord, help us devote ourselves and every day renew our devotion in spite of our failures of yesterday. Help us renew our devotion to you until you come and take us home. For our hope is in you. And Lord, now we pray that Rick might be so encouraged and that he might feel the cleansing of the blood of Jesus in his life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand for the reading of God's word as we close out. And we're going to read this together. Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty and your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule over the surging sea. When its waves mount up, you still them. We can't beat addictions by ourselves, but our Lord is mighty. Beat him with him. Have a great week.